Hi and welcome back to the channel. I recently produced a video showing the um, carrier turning into wind following the recent addition of the waypoint switch for naval vessels. Um, people seem to have an interest in how I actually did it, so here's the video showing you. This is the basic setup. I have the boat or the carrier here, and it's on a orbit. Obviously, I've shortened the orbit to suit myself for this particular video. You can make the orbit as big as you like. So I've got the four waypoints here, and at waypoint four, I tell the carrier to go to waypoint one. So there. Now you could say go to waypoint zero, which was the starting point of the carrier, but my preference was to go to waypoint one. What I also did was set up a rescue helo here, and at waypoint one, I gave it the follow command, follow naval one, set it minus 88 feet as the distance, so it would be a little bit further back from the center of the carrier, and then I set the interval to 350. It's plus 350, so if it's plus, it's 350 feet to the right or the starboard. If it's minus, then it's to the port or left. And basically, I didn't tick the last waypoint box, because if you do that, what will happen, it will go all the way around following the carrier, and when it gets to waypoint 4, it will disappear and go off and try and land somewhere. That's perfect if you want the helicopter to land on your carrier and you want to start a fresh rescue helicopter. That's entirely up to you. I'm just showing you the basics. If I leave it unticked, it will continue all the way around until it runs out of fuel. What I've also included are aircraft that clients can fly and land on the carrier if they so wish. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I set it up within the triggers to work for all aircraft and all scenarios. So let's do that now. Okay, so the way that I set this up is the wind direction is coming from 357 degrees this way. So the sensible thing to do is tell the carrier or the boat to go to waypoint 3 when it needs to turn into wind. Now to be able to do this properly, we need to set up some fairly significant trigger zones. And let me show you those now. The first trigger zone that we have is aircraft recover contact, so that when the aircraft actually get into this zone, they can make that request and get a response from the carrier. Because waypoint 3 is the go to waypoint to turn into wind, we also have to set up two no request into wind zones. Obviously, if they are traveling this way or this way here, then turning to waypoint 3 doesn't really put them into wind. The next one that we have is already into wind. So if it's traveling in this particular zone, it's already heading into wind, so the carrier doesn't have to do anything. And finally, the two critical ones are request into wind one and request into wind two, so that when the boat is in either of these two zones, then the go to waypoint three selection can take place. So hopefully that clears up the trigger zones, and now I'll move on to the triggers, which are slightly more complex than you would have thought. But that's because of the trigger zones and the complications therein. So let me show you that now. So let's run through the triggers. There are seven in total, and you'll notice that they are all of a switch condition apart from the first one at mission start. Because obviously the ship, the boat, the carrier is going to travel on its orbit, so circumstances are going to change, hence the switch conditions. 
I'll go through them one by one and try and explain how they work. So let's start with the mission start. So mission start, I've called it flag off. So essentially, when you're doing switch conditions, there are flagged events um, that are registered. So it can tell when one is off and one is on. And that's what creates the switch condition. So from the very start of the mission, we have to turn all the flags off in the mission itself that have been created. That ensures that when a flag is activated, a switch takes place, hence the switch condition. I've also included a radio item, which if you wanted to, um, you could set up as it triggers when they enter the aircraft zone. Entirely up to you. I did it from the start of the mission. Now it's a radio item. The name of it when it appears in the F10 menu is Request Recovery. And the flag, I've called it Into Wind, with a value of 1. So that's the first trigger covered. Now then, the remaining triggers, which are all switch conditions, I'm not going to go through each individual one of them. We'll be here all day with this video. Suffice to say, I put them in a, a colour coordinated order, so traffic light system, red, amber and green. And basically the red triggers are when the carrier cannot turn into wind, uh, and it lets the air crew know. Amber conditions is you can call the carrier uh, and request turn into wind for a landing. And the green is, yep, it's turned into wind. The carrier's on its way. It's letting you know you can land now. What I will do is run through the most relevant trigger to show you how that works so that we can actually turn into wind. And that is this switch condition here, turn into wind. So let me run through that for you now. Before I delve into this, just let me say that uh, I will provide a link to this mission so that you can take a look at this in a little bit more depth, a little bit more detail. Um, and that then avoids me having to run through, I would say, about an hour of all the triggers, because that's how long it would take me to go through it all. Um, so there will be a link to the mission so that you can dissect it. Right, OK, so this switch condition, which is the key element to it, because it's the one where the carrier is then pushed to waypoint three. So flag is true into wind. Now that flag is generated by the aircraft when they make the request. And the other conditions I have part of the coalition in zone blue air aircraft recover, which is this big 10 mile zone here. And when a unit type airplane is in there. At the same time, I've got the same part of coalition in zone blue request into wind. And in this particular instance, it's request into wind one. Naval. Now, into wind one is this trigger zone here. So that basically means that the boat is in this trigger zone and it will then turn into wind and go to waypoint three. Next one is exactly the same repeated as above, except that the, this particular one is now request into wind two, which is this trigger zone here. Now what happens when these conditions are met is the first one, AI task push, naval one, go to waypoint, and that's go to waypoint three. So basically, this element here has got a push task, as I showed you earlier, and it will then push and go to waypoint three, turning the carrier into wind. Now I've turned the flag off into wind, so that if anybody else wants to make a request, they can do flying in another aircraft. I've turned flag, and I've called it able, on, which means basically, the aircraft carrier is able to go to waypoint three and turn into wind. I've turned off all the other flags so that the switch conditions can be re-switched at a later date. I've also passed a message so that the air crew know that the boat is turning into wind. And added to that, 
I have a sound file, which if you want to record voiceovers, that's perfectly acceptable. You could record a voiceover for this. Uh, I've just used a radio click. And that is the key trigger in this whole mission. The rest are key, obviously, but it's literally telling the air crew at what state the boat is in when they're trying to make a request. Right, let's see that working in mission now. Oh, and by the way, what I've done in this particular version is I've changed the location of the uh, rescue helo. Because obviously the, those people who are majorly into naval aviation were saying, oh, that's not necessarily where the helicopter goes, etc., etc., etc. That's fine. I anticipated that. I expected that that would be the case. Uh, I have information now, and I've repositioned the helicopter. But you'll see that as we run through the mission. Let's do that now. Okay, so here we are in the cockpit. And I've just entered the aircraft zone. And the carrier is telling me I can't request recovery as it currently stands. So that means it's not in one of the trigger zones where it can turn to waypoint three. Having said that, once I've flown around for a bit and the carrier's moved off into the zone, it will let me know when I can make the request. And back to the jet. Okay, so the carrier is now in a position where I can make a request for recovery. What I will do is I will open up the menu. I will select option 10. And I will request recovery. Carrier tells me it's turning into wind. There we go. Carrier is now turning into wind to waypoint 3. When the carrier has turned sufficiently in the right direction, it will tell me that I can land on the carrier. And there we go. The boat is sufficiently in the right direction into wind to allow me to recover. Altitude. Altitude. I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you found it useful. And I also hope you enjoy dissecting the mission that will be supplied. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Take care now.